the evolution of extension. According to Patel, in 1983, the concept of agricultural extension and scope varies from country to country. This could be attributed to the origin of agricultural extension in various countries, but a peculiar fact is that in all countries, it is regarded as a significant social innovation that brings about change in agricultural productivity and production. It is not known where or when the first extension activities took place, but the birth of the modern extension service has been attributed to events that took place in Ireland between 1845 to 1851. Between 1845 to 1851, the Irish potato was destroyed by fungal disease and a severe famine occurred. The British government arranged for practical instructors to travel to rural areas and teach small farmers how to cultivate alternative crops. This scheme attracted the attention of government officials in Germany who organized their own system of traveling instructors. By the end of the 19th century, the idea had spread to Denmark, Netherlands, Italy, and France. The term university extension was first used by the universities of Cambridge and Oxford in 1867 to describe teaching activities that extended the work of the institution beyond the campus. Van Den and Hawkins in 1988 asserted that the term university extension or extension of the university first came into common usage in Britain in the 1940s. The idea was derived mainly from the submission of Sewell in 1850 in suggestions for the extension of the university. The report indicated that the first practical steps were taken in 1867-68 to 68, when James Stott considered to be the father of university extension and fellow of Trinity College, Cambridge, gave lecturers to women associations and working men's club in North England. Stuart later approached the University of Cambridge authorities to organize centers for extension lecture under the university supervision. This was accepted and the word extension education was adopted by University of Cambridge in 1873. University of London also followed in 1876 and Oxford in 1878. Universities thus extended work to those beyond the campus. Most of these early activities were not, however, related to agriculture. It was not until the beginning of the 20th century when colleges in the United States started conducting demonstrations at agricultural shows and giving lectures to farmers' club that the term extension service was applied to the type of work that we now recognize by that name. In the United States, the Hatch Act of 1887 established a system of agricultural experiment stations in conjunction with each state's land-grant university, and the smith Lever Act of 1914 created a system of cooperative extension to be operated by those universities in order to inform people about current developments in agriculture, home economics, and related subjects. The Act gave operational responsibility of extension to the land-grant colleges and universities. The impact of rural extension in the United States and the widespread dissemination of some of the know-how associated with it led to the transfer of the idea across the Atlantic after the World War II. This later spread to Papua Guinea, where the Department of Agriculture was established with broad community development approach, India and Pakistan, now Bangladesh, with similar orientation. By the close of the 19th century, agricultural extension system modeled to a considerable extent in the German Wanderlehar had spread to Denmark from 1870 onwards to the Netherlands, where a few extension workers had been appointed by agricultural societies in the late 1840s and 1850s. While in France, the first national, wholly state-funded agricultural extension service was established in 1879.